Hello all. Welcome to this uh, lecture on elements of mechanical engineering. My name is D.A. Ramacharilo and I am working as an assistant professor in the department of mechanical engineering. We are studying the course elements of mechanical engineering which is offered for aeronautical and uh, civil engineering branches. Uh, now the topic for today is robot control methods. So we are in the fifth module where we are studying automation systems. The automation systems are nothing but the manufacturing systems which are being automated. We will use a computer numerical control or a numerical control machine to operate normal manufacturing machines. In order to automate, we need a separate device which is called CNC. Apart from manufacturing systems, we have other automated systems, they are robots. So in the previous lecture, we have seen what is a robot and what are the different types of robots being used in manufacturing industry for different operations like gripping, like holding the object, moving the object from one place to another place. And then another kind of operations that can be performed by the robots are special applications like welding, painting, machining, etc. So these are the different applications where we can use robots. In the previous lecture, we have seen what are the different sensors and what are the different actuators used for a robot, for perfect operation of the robot. Sensors are used for sensing the information around the robot or internally, what are the functioning of different parts of the robot. So this information can be sensed by internal or external sensors. And after that, we have actuators, which actuators indicates they can create linear motion or rotatory motion. So these are the important uh, machine parts which will create motion to the robot, linear or rotary motion. And the third part is robot control method. How a robot is being controlled? There are different ways of controlling a robot. So we'll see what is a robot control method and what are the different types of methods used for controlling a robot. Let us see what is the control method. A control method is the process by which a robot is being controlled or by which it is being operated. Or we can simply say it is the set of instructions given to a robot for functioning. There are different types of uh, control methods. First one is point to point control. Suppose I have a robot. I have a base, I have a robotic uh, link on which another link is attached. I have a tool here. Now what happens is, uh, when I want to move the robot from one place to another place, like if I want to move the robot from point A to point B, I can take the point to point control. So point to point control is a process where we write the set of instructions that will make the robot to move from point A to point B. Okay, so point to point control exactly refers to the motion of the robot is made to move from point A to final point B. So the path which the robot will follow, the path which is followed by the robot to move from point A to point B is automatically generated inside the control system. Okay, We do not give the path. We will give initial point and a final point. So the robot will make its own calculations and it will move from point A to point B on its own. We, we can simply say the path of the robot is automatically generated in the control system. So this is one kind. Second kind is continuous path control. So in this process, we can write a set of instructions where we can predefine the path followed by the robot. Suppose I want to move the robot from point A to point B and I want to make the robot move in a particular direction or in a particular way. Then I can define that in the set of instructions given before so that the robot will follow the path, predefined path. Okay, so that is continuous path control. And third kind of control method is closed loop control. Closed loop control, we all know, we have studied in the previous uh, lectures. Closed loop control uses a 
feedback mechanism to understand the output variables and give this information to the control system. Okay. So this is mostly used to monitor the position or velocity of the robot. Okay. So whenever there is a robot, each of the joint will be moving in a different direction at different velocities. So this information has to be sensed by the sensors and it is processed and this information is given to the control system for necessary action of the next coming steps. Okay. So these are the three different types of processes by which we can control a robot. Now we will see each one in detail. So this is point to point control where we can control the robot with the help of a set of instructions. These set of instructions are given like at the initial and final point of the path are given point A and point B. The robot can move in any direction like straight line it can go or in a curved path like this or in this path it can go in any direction. Our goal is to make the robot move from point A to point B. So this is the point to point control where only endpoints are programmed. The path is used to connect the points are computed by the controller. So the path is automatically generated. User can control velocity and may permit linear or piecewise linear motion. So what are the constraints that a user can have in this point to point control method? Are? So user can control velocity. So with which velocity the robot has to move from point A to point B can be defined in this set of instructions. And we can allow linear or piecewise motion. That means the whole path is divided into small parts. That means the path between A and B is divided into some n number of parts and each part motion or velocity can be uh, described in the program. Okay. And then feedback control is used during the motion to ascertain that individual joints have achieved desired locations. So we have different joints and links in the robot. So these links will move from point A to point B. So a set of two to three links will combinedly work together to move the end point, end effector from point A to point B. So the feedback control system, we can take the help of this feedback to achieve the movement of the robot to the desired location, whether the robot has reached to point B or not. So here A, Point A is the initial point and point B is the final point. So the, we can take the help of feedback system to understand whether the robot has reached the point B or not. And then, so mostly point, point to point control methods can be applied when the loads are about 500 pounds. 500 pounds or simply we can say it is half of the uh, kilograms like 250 kilograms. When the load is about 250 kilograms, we can use point to point control because the path is automatically generated inside the controller. And uh, some applications of this point to point controller, pick and place operations, like pick and place operation is nothing but picking an object from point A, moving that uh, object to point B and placing the object at point B. So this is pick and place operation where we can move objects from one place to another place. And then second application is palletizing. Palletizing means simply we can uh, say stacking. Like if we have some n number of products, we can stack one on the other. So this is called palletizing. So this also can be done by using point to point control method. And last one is machine loading. So whenever we are using a robot for loading work pieces into a machine, a CNC machine, then we can use this point to point control because the path is not need to be in a particular way. The path can be in any direction, but it has to reach the final position where the program is given. Okay, this is point to point control method where we can control the robot by giving the end points of the path. Path is not defined here. And second kind is continuous path control. So in this continuous path control, we can define the path also along with the endpoints. We can define the path in which the robot has to move 
from point A to point B. Because depending on the application where these robots are being used, we need to define the path also. So suppose I am using a robot for drilling mission, drilling or I can say for milling mission. So I have to move the robotic arm from point A to point B in a straight line so that I will get a straight slot. Okay, on milling machine we can create slots where I want, I want to move the robotic arm from point A to point B in a straight line motion. So here the path is also defined. So this method is called continuous path control. Okay, so that is what in this uh, method the control over the path is also taken. Uh, the path is also controlled. Okay, and the second point is path is controlled by manipulating the joints throughout the entire motion via closed loop system. So, whatever the path that is being followed by the robot, that path is also calculated and it is manipulated with the help of a closed loop system. So, in this process, we need a feedback system where we can understand whether the robot is following the desired path or not. With that, we can make the robot move from one point to another point. So, some applications of this uh, continuous path control are spray painting and polishing, grinding, arc welding. So, these are the methods where we can uh, use the robot by continuous path control because a stipulated path has to be maintained by the robot in order to complete these operations like in painting. I have to paint a particular area starting from one point to another point. It has to go in a particular way depending on the shape of the body on which we are painting. And again polishing also has to be done because entire body has to be polished or some surface of the body has to be polished so that I have to predefine the path which the robot is following and then grinding. Grinding is also very similar to polishing where we can sharpen the tools or uh, smoothen the surface of metal bodies. So grinding process also requires a continuous path control. And lastly welding. Because welding is joining of two metals, we have to follow a path for welding the joint in a straight line or a curved line depending on the object. Okay, So these are all some of the examples of uh, continuous path control methods where we can define the path as well as the end points. Next we will see what is robot programming. We don't go deep into the programming languages or uh, programming code set of instructions. We will study what are the different types of programming available for robots. Okay, So the first kind is online robots, uh, I mean online programming and second one is offline programming. So in online programming there are two types and moreover the online programming in indicates when the robot is working, robot is on condition. That means the robot is in on condition, we will program it by changing the instructions or using some techniques. We will learn about them. And uh, offline means when the robot is in off position. That means before switching on the robot, we can give the code or set of instructions is given to the robot to work in a particular way. So in this, there are different methods are there. Online uh, robot programming, there are two types teach pendant and second one is lead through programming. So these two are very interesting uh, methods where we will uh, train the robot. And uh, second kind is offline programming where we can write uh, a code. Okay, uh, like using a set of algorithms, we can write the program for a robot. There are two types, robot programming language or task level programming language. For a particular task, we can write separate program. Now we'll see what is teach pendant robot. So we have seen that teach pendant is a process where is when it is used when the robot is in on condition. That means when the robot is in working condition, then we will use this method for controlling the robot. See here, we have seen that any mission which can operate on its own by using artificial intelligence is called a robot. But here in this method, this is a control method where we will give the instructions to the robot by using a 
remote control or a device like this. You can see in this picture, there is a handheld remote device which is having a lot of buttons and a small screen is there. So this device is used to give instructions to the robot. Now see, this is one kind of automation where we will give the set of instructions to the robot and the robot will follow those instructions. Then what is the use of automation? Because we are continuously operating this uh, with the help of a remote, uh, the robot is doing some operations. But in automation, we have to make the systems work on their own precisely and uh, they have to work in less time. So, the advantage of using this teach pendant process is we will give the set of instructions like I have 10 instructions are there for doing a operation like uh, machining. Okay. The robot will follow what are the set of instructions we have given in this uh, uh, control and it will follow those methods like from step 1 to step 10 it will follow and it will learn the process from how the robot has to work from step 1 to 10. This process is stored in the memory and it can be repeated many number of times. Okay. So the teach pendant is nothing but it is the method of controlling a robot where we can give the set of instructions for one process. This set of instructions can be used multiple times because this program is stored inside the robot. What are the instructions we have given? So these instructions can be repeated many number of times. Because of this uh, uh, storage of a program, because the simple set of instructions very requires very less uh, memory. Like if you write the program in a coding language, it requires very small memory. But here we are giving the instructions with the help of a controller where we will press the buttons and we will make some changes to the program. So this set of instructions will require large memory when compared to a robotic programming language. Okay. So here a handheld device is uh, used to control the robot motions. The endpoints are recorded in the controller memory. So what are the instructions we have given? The endpoints, starting and uh, last points are stored inside the memory. Okay. And then sequentially played back to execute robot action. So the set of instructions are given to the robot. So these set of instructions are stored in the memory and they are played sequentially one after the other for many number of cycles. So we can repeat those actions. Okay. Trajectory is determined by robot control. Here we can simply say this is a point to point control system where the path is not defined, we will define the end points only. So it is a point to point control system, which we have seen just now. So trajectory is determined by the robot and this is suitable for point to point control applications. And this is easy to use. No special programming skills are required because we are using a handheld device like this. This is called teach pendant device where we are giving the set of instructions or we are controlling the motion of the robot with the help of buttons. So simply knowing how to operate this uh, remote is enough. There is no requirement of uh, programming knowledge for using this kind of control method. So this is useful when programming robots for wide range of repetitive tasks for long production runs. So this kind of uh, method is used when we have to use the robot for a uh, long process or like long methods. If I want to use the robot for like 10 years, I can simply write this code once and it will follow the same code for like 10 years of, of a span. And moreover, one uh, disadvantage in this process is this cannot be used for a long process. I cannot use this for long process. Only very small steps or very small st set of instructions like 1 to 10 or 20 uh, instructions can be given. And more than that, this process is not suitable. Only small production techniques are possible with this control method. Okay. So this is all about uh, teach pendant method where we will use a handheld device for operating the robot. And these set of instructions are stored in the robot. 
and these are played sequentially where we will repeat the instructions continuously for n number of times and we can use the same program for many years. Here one uh, disadvantage is we require a large memory because of the, uh, the memory requirement for the production set of instructions. So it requires large memory. And then second one is lead through programming. So in this picture we can see lead through programming which indicates the robot is being trained by holding the uh, robotic arm with hand. See here a human being a uh, person is training the robot. He is training the robot to do a particular task by holding the robot with uh, his hands. He is moving the robot from one point to another point. So this is another kind of uh, programming technique which is used where the robots are used for very small applications like writing or they are used for very small applications like uh, drilling holes in metal parts. So for these examples we can use this kind of uh, programming method. So in this method lead the robot physically through the required sequence of motions. See here when I want to make the robot learn something I will hold the robot with my hands and I will move the robot in the particular path so that this path is recorded inside the uh, robot control memory and this can be played many number of times. So in the previous method we have seen we are using a ro remote control. We are, we are uh, using a device which has a lot of switches where we can control the motion of the robot with the help of switches. But here we are using it directly like we can hand held the robot and we can move the robot from one point to another point by using our own perception. So trajectory and endpoints are recorded using sampling routines. So whatever the trajectory or the endpoints of the path are recorded in the control memory and uh, these points which we have given to the instructions in the form of instructions we have given to the robot. These steps can be recorded like uh, 60 to 80 steps can be recorded per a second. Okay. So if there are, if we are giving very fast instructions, like if we move the robot very fastly, like 60 to 80 steps can be recorded in a second by this robot, which means it can give a precise motion. Okay. Whenever we, whenever we train the robot, uh, we are making the machine learn a process. This process is stored in the control memory and it is so precise that 60 to 80 steps of the process can be recorded per second. There we can get a precise uh, movement. When played back, it results in a continuous smooth motion. So while we are uh, making the robot learn, this we can call it as machine learning. When, we are, when the machine is learning a technique from us, we will give the set of instructions very slowly, like at a speed of a human, uh, human rate of speed, we will make the robot learn the process very slowly because we have to see the process has to be uh, learned by the robot very precisely. We cannot do fast actions and make mistakes. So we will slowly make the robot learn the process and they are played, uh, played back. The set of instructions are played back at a faster rate compared to the speed which we have made the robot to learn. Suppose if I make a, make the robot to learn a process for five minutes, I can make this robot to work on the same set of instructions for at least half of the time. 2.5 minutes are required for doing the same process. Because while working, the robot is more precise and it can do multiple operations in very less time. It can do fast with precision. Okay. So here the disadvantage is very large memory is required. So this is one disadvantage because we are making the we are not even using a remote control for giving the set of instructions. Okay. In Teach Pendant, we have used a handheld device. 
we are giving the instructions by holding the robotic arm we are moving the robotic arm by gripping this uh, there is a ring and we can move the robot with our hands so when different motions are being given to the robot they are all stored in different programming languages they are stored in a large memory okay they require a large memory so that is why this is one disadvantage of the uh, lead to programming method and another disadvantage is whenever there are errors like we are humans we are training the robot to move in a particular motion so we may make some mistakes or we may give some wrong uh, path which is also being stored in the memory if i move the robot from point a to point b by mistakenly i have taken this robot not in a straight direction but i have given a jerk okay i want to move the robot in a straight line but somehow some jerk has happened i have moved the robot in some uh, discontinuous path okay now this discontinuity in the set of instructions is also stored in the robot memory okay so whatever the instructions we give everything will be recorded in the robotic memory so that is why there are more chances of errors in this method because we are as a human being we know we can do a, we cannot do a process with the high precision that is why we are depending on robots now in this method we are training the robot the errors of human being what we call it as uh, human errors so these errors are also included into the uh, robotic program okay so when we play the program repeatedly the same set of instructions like if we move a jerk this jerk is also recorded in the program and this will be played n number of times when we play the actual robot program so this is one uh, disadvantage and large memory requirement is another disadvantage of this process and then second one yeah here so the disadvantage advantages of a lead to programming are it is very easy no special programming skills is required because we as a human being we will hold the robot with hands and we can uh, make the robot to move from one place to another place okay the disadvantages are not practical for large robots we cannot move very large sized robots with our hands because they are very heavy and the high accuracy and straight line movements are difficult to achieve because human beings are very prone to errors we cannot give high accuracy or straight line motions by using this method okay any random motions are possible and uh, difficult to edit or unwanted operator moves we have seen just now any errors or unwanted moves happened during the learning process they cannot be removed or edited because they are all stored by a program and then difficult to in incorporate external sensor data here the external sensor data cannot be taken into consideration because this is a lead through programming method the program itself is written while we are giving the instructions so the feedback sensor information cannot be taken into considerations while uh, using this robot while using this method synchronization with other machines or equipment in the work cell is difficult so here the movement of the robot is very random which is given by the operator so that is why the synchronization with other robots is very difficult in this process a large amount of memory is required this is another disadvantage of the process and now we'll see what are the different uh, robotic programming languages which are being used in the industry nowadays see here these are the different programming languages we can divide the program into two kinds first one is robot program where we will write the program for the entire sequence of operations starting from the machine turning on doing some operations like 3 to 4 operations the robot can do and finally the machine is going to its rest position all these set up instructions can be written in a big program so this is first kind where we can write a robotic program and second kind is part level program where we can divide the program into small parts and we can write the code for a particular operation 
like if I want to use the robot from for uh, pick and place operation, I can write the code for that set of instructions only for that process only. So this is part level program. So these are the two levels, two types of programs which are used for robotic uh, control, where there are different languages are there. ARLA, AML, BABS. So these are all the different languages which are being used for uh, robot programming. Okay. So mostly uh, Bosch uh, is a company which uh, developed BABS for uh, uh, robot control programming. And then Unimation has uh, developed the process VAL2. So Unimation is the society for uh, robots which was uh, formed in the year 1960s. Uh, these are some. These are the companies. These are the companies who developed different programming languages, and these are the language names. So here, help language is there, which is developed by DEA, and then GMF company, Clues. So these are some of the companies. Some companies we know Siemens. Siemens developed the, the programming language named SRCL, Robotic Control Language. Siemens robotic control language and uh, so different companies have developed different languages depending on their need because uh, the programming languages are very flexible these days where we can write very large set of instructions in a very small amount of code small number of lines can be written as a form of code so that is all for this uh, lecture so far we have studied what are the different uh, Robot control methods, they are point to point control, continuous path control, where we will uh, describe the path in which the robot has to move. In point to point control, the endpoints are uh, described and uh, the path is automatically generated inside the system. And then we have seen what are the different robot uh, programming methods, robot programming like teach pendant method teach pendant where we will use a handheld device for giving the robotic motions and second one is lead through programming where we will handheld the we will hold the robotic arm with hand and we will make the robot to move in a particular direction and make the robot to learn this requires large memory and then we have robot programming languages developed by different companies so we'll meet in the like next lecture like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates